Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Eat Move Sleep, How Small Choices Lead to Big Changes by Tom Rath. Eat, Move, Sleep's title suggests that the book's premise is well known. First and foremost, eat healthily. Secondly, make sure to work out regularly. Finally, try to get more sleep. All of this seems very straightforward and familiar, don't you think? That being said, it's not as simple as it appears. Tom Rath is here to tell us why conventional wisdom isn't working, and the truth is that we're failing at the fundamentals. The documentary Eat Move Sleep explores the ways in which the decisions we make on a daily basis have an impact on our well-being. We've learned that eating, moving, and sleeping form an equilateral triangle after conducting extensive research. Previously, We've concentrated on these necessities as standalone components, but we need to combine them to lead healthier lives. To learn more about Tom Rath, a best selling author and inspirational speaker, visit his website. He was diagnosed with VHL disease, a rare form of cancer, when he was 16 years of age. Also at 16, he lost an eye and had to be hospitalized for a week every year as part of his treatment for the rest of his life. Since then, Rath has had to deal with the constant fear of getting a new tumor. Even so, he was convinced to take action after receiving this diagnosis. So, he's done extensive research on health and wellness as a result. He's also taken a critical look at his own decisions, and he's done so introspectively. One of the most important things he took away from this experience was the importance of the seemingly insignificant health and wellness decisions we make on a daily basis. In Eat Move Sleep, Dr. Atul Gawande argues that traditional approaches to healthy eating, physical activity, and sleep are ineffective and that a new approach is required. For this reason, the book doesn't have separate sections for diet, exercise, and sleep, which are all interconnected. As a result, these fundamentals are included in each chapter. Even though this is a book that tells us what we already know, it isn't. Core of the issue. How many times have you tried a new diet or fad? How many times have you written down resolutions to start a new workout routine or join a fitness center? And how many times have you woken up in the middle of the night worrying about your health? Diets don't work for many of us because they don't provide a long-term solution. Diets, on the other hand, are presented as a quick fix. No one hasn't heard the claims that some new fad diet will help them lose a certain number of pounds in just 30 days. In part, this is due to the fact that diets do not address the psychological aspects of food intake. As a result, diets are perceived as restrictive because they are built on a foundation of guilt and scarcity. In addition, we tend to lose interest in exercising before we even begin. Every single one of these arguments has been made before. The notions of good health and physical fitness have become second nature to a large portion of the population. Why don't we do what we know is best for our health and well-being? In this book, Rath provides practical and useful advice on how to put the core ideas into action. It's not always a lack of knowledge, more often than not, it's a struggle to break old habits and adopt new ways of life. Awakening to the reality of needing more sleep. Close your eyes and imagine what a wonderful day would be like. Forget about what constitutes a perfect day, just focus on a good day. Getting out of bed is the first step to a good day for most of us. The quality of our sleep can have a significant impact on how we approach the day ahead of us. To make up for our lack of ZZZS, we may hit the snooze button until we're forced to get out of bed and start the day right. The snooze button frequently robs us of the opportunity to exercise or eat a healthy breakfast. How many times have you sacrificed exercise and breakfast in order to get a few more minutes of sleep in the morning? Good sleep is the foundation of almost every successful day. Waking up rested sets the tone for the day ahead. You guessed it, being too tired and lazy is a common reason for not exercising or for reaching for unhealthy foods. So, in the end, it's all about energy. To perform at our best, we need to be fueled up. Let's use the example of a battery to illustrate our point. Sleep, food and exercise are the three pillars of our well-being. These items are necessary if we are to have as many good days as possible while also maximizing our energy levels. In order to get the most out of our day-to-day -day lives we need to make sure we get enough sleep, eat healthily, and exercise regularly. How much sleep do you get on a typical night in the US? When you consider the 10,008 and 36 minute rule, many of us think that's enough. Let's take a closer look at this rule, shall we? Anders Ericsson's 10,000-hour rule is likely to be familiar to you. As a general rule, 10,000 hours of practice is required to become an expert in a particular subject matter. According to Rath research, those who excel in their fields get an average of 8 hours and 36 minutes of sleep each night. 
It's our ability to sleep that gives us the edge over the competition. It has a cascading effect, which is why sleep is such an essential component. People who don't get enough sleep are more likely to overeat, procrastinate, feel tired, and be more prone to illness and injury. Because of this, the first step we must take is to stop blaming ourselves for going to bed early. No one should be sleep deprived, and no one should sacrifice sleep in order to appear more productive. This is the bottom line. The more you sleep, the more productive you will be. Every day begins with how we feel when we get out of bed in the morning. So, what can we do to improve our quality of sleep? Exercise and a healthy diet can help us recharge our batteries, so let's go back to the analogy, Rath, on the other hand, offers some excellent advice on how to establish a regular sleep schedule and regulate our sleep cycles. A white noise machine and limiting artificial light before bedtime may help you get a better night's sleep. Too much sweetness in life is detrimental. Cancer, diabetes, and heart disease are all on the rise as we move into a new century. Because many of these diseases can be prevented, Rath believes that we should take more responsibility for our own health and well-being. As a result of Rath's preventative rather than curative approach, we begin to rethink our relationship with our bodies. We will be healthier and less likely to get sick if we take control of our eating, sleeping and exercising habits, he claims. Research shows that there are a number of simple ways that we can extend our lives and improve our health. We can significantly improve our health by reducing our intake of sugar. Let's take another look at that triangle. We're more likely to indulge in sugary snacks throughout the day if we're sleep deprived, which has a negative impact on our motivation to work out. As a result of eating a more healthful diet, we are more likely to exercise and sleep well at night. We've all heard that sugar is bad for us. Cancer candy is what Tom Rath refers to sugar as, and he claims that it is harmful. Sugar is known to feed cancer cells, as evidenced by numerous studies. The problem is that today's food is full of sugar. Sugar consumption in the United States is so high that on average, each American consumes 150 pounds of sugar each year. Take an average-sized car tire and imagine stacking seven on top of each other. That's about how much sugar we consume each year in excess. So, the first step is to eliminate all added sugars from your diet. The best way to get started is to stop drinking sugary drinks. Do you know that fruit juice contains a lot of sugar as well as soft drinks? Tea and coffee, without the added sugar, are better alternatives, as well as water. Many of the carbohydrates we consume contain sugar as well. Refined foods should be avoided at all costs, and vegetables should be substituted in their place whenever possible. You should also try to avoid artificial sweeteners because they can make you crave the real thing. Your body will eventually adjust if you don't overindulge in them. Small decisions can have a big impact. We rarely consider the long-term consequences of the food we buy when we go grocery shopping. Shopping for food isn't something we should do on autopilot, according to the author of this piece. He makes the case that what we put into our bodies has either a net gain or a net loss on our well-being. Almost all of the information in this book is familiar to most people. There are many of us who know what we should eat, but lack the willpower. When it comes to this, our author has some great advice to offer you. You can buy your willpower at the grocery store, he advises. Buying food that is good for our bodies before we go shopping is essential. We can strengthen our willpower and avoid overindulging in unhealthy foods if we plan ahead and make healthy choices. There are many benefits to not having junk food in the house, including the fact that it will not require any of our willpower to avoid it. To put it another way, we'll have paid for our willpower at the supermarket. Strategic shopping is all about avoiding temptation at home by stocking up on healthy foods. Rath claims that saying no at the outset will help us stick to a healthy diet. Another suggestion is to go shopping with a list and a plan in mind. Stay away from the aisles of the supermarket that are stocked with processed foods. As a matter of fact, he recommends that we stick to the perimeter of the grocery store because this is where the bulk of fresh food is located. Cut off the source of temptation and pre-commit to the idea that you want to buy, prepare and eat healthy meals. Humans are very suggestible, so cut it out. Similarly, if we look at the triangle of healthy food, exercise, and a good night's sleep, we see that all three are linked. How to do it right. Did you know that sitting for long periods of time can lead to weight gain and an increased risk of disease? Sitting for long periods of time may be acceptable because you manage to get some exercise into your daily routine. However, if we want to get the most out of our daily exercise, we should be moving around more throughout the day and not just during designated workout times. Exercise is essential to our overall health and well-being, and we're well aware of this. Endorphins, those natural mood enhancers, also help us stay focused for up to 12 hours after we exercise. We also know that exercise has been scientifically proven to improve cognitive function. 
As a result, it raises the question, why don't we exercise more? If we want to improve, Rath says we must take control of what we can control and measure our progress in order to do so. In order to achieve our goals, we need to keep track of how far we've progressed each day. All scientific experiments have a specific and measured set of outcomes. It's time to treat our bodies as if they're a scientific experiment and keep track of all the signs of progress. In order to get the most benefit out of this, begin by setting achievable goals and tracking your progress each day. Movement, sleep, and eating are all affected by this. You'll be able to see how much progress you've made towards your goal if you keep track of your steps and progress. Seeing progress, no matter how small, serves as a powerful motivator. Start by tracking your steps, analyzing your diet, and keeping an eye on your sleep schedule. Being aware of what you're looking at is the first step in improving your skills. To track our progress toward our goals, our author suggests a variety of methods, including the use of a pedometer. People who wear pedometers have been shown to significantly increase their daily activity levels, according to research. There is a significant difference in the amount of time you spend walking each day. It doesn't matter what method you use to track your progress, the key is that it leads to consistency, which is how we form new habits. Using measurements can also aid us in making better informed decisions. In closing, here we go. When we learn how to apply what we know about diet, exercise, and sleep, eat move sleep succeeds. We have the fundamentals down, but the issue is that there are no immediate rewards for achieving those long-term objectives. Using Rath's methods, we can make better decisions far more frequently. The idea is that by making better decisions, the right decisions will become second nature. In Rath's view, good health and well-being are the result of a three-way relationship between mind, body, and spirit. There are hundreds of books out there that discuss how to eat well or get enough sleep or work out but our author argues that all three of these aspects are necessary if you want to live a healthy life. As a result, this comprehensive guide shows us how to maximize our well-being through the analysis of empirical research and the provision of long-term and practical advice. As a result, eat, move, sleep teaches us how to implement and measure the changes that we make in our lifestyle. These elements must be incorporated into our culture so that we can all lead better lives. When everything is in balance, it has a ripple effect that ripples outward. So. What steps will you take to ensure that tomorrow and every day after it is filled with happiness? Perhaps it's time to get out of bed, eat well, and move around more frequently. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.